it's basically just a tiger and iguana put together. I'm not really sure this, this car reminds me of either of those creatures. I mean, a tiger would be quite impressive. That, that kind of makes me think of a sporty kind of car, which this car isn't. And iguana, do you really want anything to be named after that? So onto this car. This day and age, a 1.4 litre turbo petrol in a big car like this sounds perfectly acceptable. But in 2008, it was really the dawn of the downsizing turbo engines. And it sounded very small for a big, heavy car. They hadn't quite got their act together in terms of petrol turbo fuel economy. So this 1.4 litre isn't exactly the most frugal of engines. Of course, for that reason, it wasn't a very big seller. And most of these cars are two litre diesel, which would suit this car quite well. The entry level two litre diesel had 138 brake horsepower and did not 60 in around 10 seconds, which is perfectly acceptable. It would also get you 45 mpg. Chances are, if you're looking for a TIG line, you'll be looking for a, an engine like that. Thanks, Sam and Andy, for lending me this car. There's something I've noticed that uh, either you have a heavy right foot or you do a lot of short journeys, because with a full tank of fuel, when I got in this car, it was saying 350 miles, and I've just been driving it around, and I've now got 405 miles of range, so let's see if I can keep that going does have a bit of poke to it, enough. So inside in this interior, it's very Volkswagen, quite grey, I mean there's a little bit of silver on this plastic here, and I've got a lot of choices for ventilation. I've got, I've got like, uh, what's that, eight different vents here that I can aim individually. I'm not sure why I'd want to Maybe have that bit up at my face, that bit down there on my left leg, get that one up on the window, into my face from the other side. I don't know, you, you, you've got lots of choices. You can, you can have the air blown at you from any which way you like. So as you can see behind me, there's a lot of glass. You know, you, your kids are not going to feel too hemmed in back there, or adults for that matter. Driving the Tiguan around town, the steering's really quite light. It's easy to manoeuvre. It looks like a big car, but it doesn't really feel like you're driving anything particularly massive. I don't even feel that high up over people, just a little bit. And then the ride quality around town's pretty smooth and comfortable. I did find that on some country roads it starts to get a little bit more unsettled, it feels a little bit jiggly, but uh, certainly around town and on smoother motorways and, and A roads it, it feels really quite comfortable. The visibility is really good, there's a lot of glass because the shape of this car is like a, quite, a, quite boxy. The panels of glass are quite big. The A pillars seem to sort of stretch out of the way a little bit so I can see onto roundabouts and stuff. And it's something that, that these SUVs get a lot of complaints about. A lot of them are just front wheel drive and, and they're not, they don't really have any sort of all weather, I mean I, I hesitate to say off-road connotation because none of these cars are truly designed to be off-road but to give the Tiguan a little bit of credit when it came out, it was only available as all-wheel drive. There were no two-wheel drive options. Later on in its life, uh, they did introduce a two-wheel drive version, but most of them remained four-wheel drive. So it, it does have that feature that you would kind of hope that a car that looks like this would have, which is just to give you just that little bit more feeling of stability, certainly in winter. So I've, I've been stuck in slow-moving traffic for a while. It's just dawned on me that I'm not actually going anywhere. I'm just driving around. So why didn't I just turn around? past that last junction. So it's a mixture of uh, different levels of build quality in this cabin because it's got that feeling that Volkswagen would like you to, to believe that their cars are, are well put together and well built and it, it generally does feel like that. And if you listen carefully, it sounds just like a golf. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that are not, not held together so well, like these vents here, a lot of them are broken and little flaps of plastic are moving around. Uh, there's a thing in the back in the centre console which when you take it off it just falls off. I can't hear, really hear anything creaking or rattling which is good. I mean this car like I say it's done 95, 96,000 miles now. You'd, you'd expect some wear and tear and generally I think it's held up well. I mean this is a family car with two young kids that are, that are having their way with it. Now look it's a uh, Cullinan. I'm not sure I've actually seen one of those on the road before. Now something that Volkswagen get right in their cars, it is important, it's an important thing. The wind and road noise, it's just the general level of noise in the car when you're at speed. And it's always nice and, and hushed. And that really makes a difference to your sanity on long journeys. But yeah, something that, that's good for the motorway is that 
you've got this armrest here that you can basically put anywhere you like. It'll stay stay in the position you put it, and so you can extend it forwards under your arm, and you can also lift it up and then lock it in place. And then you've got nice uh, armrest just casually sit like this and have one hand on the wheel and one on the armrest. So with its relaxing ride, quiet interior, it would be a good car to do miles in. The only thing is that these cloth seats, the lumbar support is almost non-existent. There's no adjustment for it and I, I can feel that my back sort of arching the wrong way into the seat so I think after, after time that would be what would get me. Something a bit weird about this model, I think it's one of the lower spec ones because there's a lot of uh, blanking plates everywhere but it, it doesn't have any controls on the steering wheel, which I've not seen on any car for quite a long time. Almost quite a refreshing thing to see, actually, a nice blank steering wheel that's used for its sole purpose of actually just steering. But yeah, it's kind of annoying. I mean, if, if you want to be able to control the radio and stuff with your thumbs, there's a little button on the dashboard here that says Tim on it. I wonder if you get a personalized button when you buy this car and the first guy you bought it was called Tim. So when you press it, it comes up with Tim, no messages. So, Tim never got any messages. Something that surprised me about the Tiguan, because any SUV I get in, I'm, I'm not even for one second thinking that it might feel alright to drive or to handle okay, but as far as SUVs go, this feels quite nice. Although it's a little bit lollopy because it's, it's high up off the ground, like it doesn't feel like it's going to roll over. It feels quite well planted to the road and, and and the steering feels sharp enough. As far as these sorts of cars go, it's uh, it's all right. The Tiguan is, certainly for its day in 2008, a very safe car. It got full marks on the uh, Euro NCAP crash test. That's five stars and quite a high percentage rating for adult and child occupant protection of the cars that existed back then. This, this is one of the safer ones. As with any SUV worth its salt, you have to have quite a few practicalities, cubby holes and things. There's a fair few of them in the Tiguan. You've got this sunglasses holder up here, which is nice. The seats have like a, a container and underneath them that you can pull out and hide things in. You've got a glove box, which is pretty reasonably sized. Door pockets, which are of that Volkswagen fashion, lined with soft, material which is nice and it stops things rattling yeah and then you've got a center console cubby a little another little flock line thing here which is hard to clean cup holders are pretty good this this thing which has got quite a, a wide bottom and it fits perfectly fine in the two cup holders in the front and they've got little legs to hold things in as well and then it also fits quite easily in the door pocket so. oh hey i think that might be a uh, backseat jj Oh, JJ, get in. Uh, where have you been? Uh, he's been on a wander. Well, at least I found him. Yeah, um, just, just stay back there. You know, do your job and let me know what you think of uh, the back seat. What's his problem, eh? I just wanted to go on holiday and he wouldn't let me have any time off. It's, uh, as you would expect from a nice big SUV, it's uh, really good back here. Oh, someone's just turned up. You've got a lot of headroom above your head like that. A lot of leg room. Loads of leg room actually. It's set for uh, JJ in the front at six foot and I'm six foot as well and I can sit behind him with tons of leg room to spare. Yeah that's excellent. And then the seats you can slide them forward as well so uh, if, you, if you want a bit more space in the boot you can bring the seats forward and if you want more leg room you can take them all the way back. There's a nice big armrest here. Not particularly comfortable because it's plastic but you can get some two cups in it. And then finally, the Rolls-Royce level of uh, quality, and that's this, the picnic table. And one other good thing about this is how the doors open quite wide. Pretty easy to get like a child seat in through this gap. Yes, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not escaping. Not this time. Do you have one of these first generation Tiger Iguanas? And if you do, what do you think of it? Let me know in the comments below whether you agree with what I've said or whether you've got some uh, differing opinions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.